When he was just five years old, Franklin Roosevelt, the former president of the United States, complained to his mother that his day was dictated by rules and a strict schedule. His mother said, you know what, fine. Tomorrow, Franklin, you can do whatever you want. The day is all yours. The next day, Sarah Roosevelt wrote in her diary that Franklin, quote, quite on his own accord, went back contently to his old routine, end quote. He did the same routine that he had always done, the one that he had complained about the day before. But it felt okay, because suddenly he was doing it on his own terms. Now, this is actually, I think, really important to understanding how people think about money. I think it might be the single most important topic in becoming happier with your money and using money to give you a better life. Charlie Munger, who's one of the greatest investors of our time, once said, quote, I did not intend to get rich. I just wanted to get independent. Now that I think is such an important goal when dealing with our money. Everyone should start their financial journey by, journey by asking, what is my goal? What am I after? Do I want more money? Is it to buy more stuff? To buy a, a car, a house, a nicer car, a nicer house, better clothes, education for my children? You might answer yes to all of those. I know I probably do. Uh, money is great because it can buy you stuff. We all know that. But there's another thing that money does for us that Franklin Roosevelt showed when he was five years old. Money can, if we use it right, bring independence. It can bring a sense of autonomy and controlling your own time. And that, I think, is what I call the highest form of wealth. Waking up every morning and just saying, I can do whatever I want today. Even if what you want to do is going to work and working as hard as you can. Like Roosevelt, if you're doing it on your own terms, you feel happier. So then the question is, how can you use money to gain independence and control over your time? There are a couple things to think about here. One thing that's obvious, but really easy to overlook, is that wealth is what you don't see. Wealth is the money that people have not spent. Wealth is the homes that people didn't buy. It's the cars that people didn't purchase. It's the jewelry that they didn't get. Wealth is money that you don't spend, that you've saved up and it's sitting in your bank account. You haven't spent it yet. That's what wealth is. And then the question is, what good is money saved up if you're not gonna spend it? If you're fortunate enough to earn some money and save it, what good does it do to not spend it? What does it do for you if it's just sitting there in your bank account? And to me, the answer is actually pretty obvious here, which is that wealth that you've saved up and haven't spent gives you control over your time. It gives you independence. Wealth that you haven't spent is what lets you wake up and say, I can do whatever I want today. Because when you have savings, you have options. The option to choose maybe where you wanna live, maybe what kind of work you wanna do, maybe how long you wanna work for or when you can retire. If you lose your job, maybe you don't have to take the first one that's available. With savings, you can wait until another better job comes around. It lets you handle the inevitable ups and downs and surprises and mishaps of life with so much more ease than if you spent all the money that you've made. It gives you time to think and freedom to think for yourself. Just shifting your mindset from, I want more money so I can buy more stuff to, I want more money so that I can be independent is such a powerful way to think. Now here's one reason why. I think there are two kinds of money thinkers, two kinds of money mindsets. One is current thinkers and the other is future thinkers. Now, that's really important. Current thinkers are all about what's happening at this moment. What can I do right now? What can I buy right now? And it's not that that's bad, I do that too. But if all you think about is the present day, then everything you've worked for in the past can only benefit the present day. But if you're a future thinker, that flips. Because when you're a future thinker, work that you do today can benefit you for the rest of your life. The money you save today, the real wealth that you accumulate and don't spend, gives you freedom and independence, not just today or this week, but potentially next year or five years from now for the rest of your life. Not spending the money that you make can feel wasteful, like it serves no purpose. But by giving you options in how you live your life, it's actually providing value every single day that you can hold on to. Now, independence that you gain from your wealth that you haven't spent exists on a spectrum. On one end, you go from total reliance on the kindness of strangers, where you have no independence at all. And at another level, you know, being able to pick up what you want to do, that's a form of independence. 
At another level, you can worry less about the inevitable problems of life, knowing that you have the savings to cover an unexpected purchase. That lack of worry is a huge sense of independence. Then there are things like avoiding debt as much as you can, so that you, you can live your life without your schedule being dictated by a bank's repayment terms. And at the highest levels of wealth, of independence, you can do whatever you want. Spend your time with whom you want, for as long as you want, doing what you want, when you want to do it. Just shifting your thinking from using money to buy stuff to using money to gain independence is so important. It gives your savings account, the money that you haven't spent, the real wealth that you have, a real sense of purpose and helps you use that money to give you a better life.